Hi everyone, I'm Laura, I'm with Hope Living, and uh, today we're lucky enough to sit down with three of the biggest names in hair care, Frederick Fakai, Sally Hirschberger, and Harry Josh. We're gonna talk about the industry in the time of Corona, how their brands are evolving, and how they're pivoting to accommodate the needs of celebrities. 12 and hours. Alike. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to everybody. Um, first, we have Frederick Fakai, the executive chairman and founder of the world-renowned brand Fakai. Frederick is known for his modern approach to cutting hair, as well as luxurious salon experiences enjoyed by Hollywood's elite, including Cindy Crawford, Madonna, and more at his New York City salons. Um, and his most recent endeavor has been reclaiming his namesake brand with the launch of Fakai, a high-performance, eco-friendly, sustainable, and salon-tested collection of hair care products. Hi, Frederick. How are you? Nice Good. to have you. Good. How are you? Good. Good. And then we have Sally Hirschberger, um, who is one of the most influential and trend-setting hairstylists across the globe. Sally travels coast to coast to meet the needs of her high-profile clients, who have included Julia Roberts, Nicole Kidman, Sandra Bullock, Chrissy Turlington, Jimmy Fallon, and Tom Cruise, just to name a few. Um, she has salons in New York and California, including uh, Hudson Yards, Nomad, and Uptown in New York, and Sally Hirschberger, Los Angeles, and the newly launched Supreme Head Agency. Sally also has her own collection of products and tools in her 24K range. And then last but not least, we have Harry Josh, who knew by the age of 15 that he wanted to work in the world of fashion. So in pursuit of that dream, he set out from his native Vancouver to New York, where he quickly landed a position as a casting director for Marc Jacobs and Louis Vuitton. His talent with hair was soon realized by the models he worked with, who began to request his services. Uh, and head to his walk-up apartment for styling sessions. And before long, he kind of became legendary um, and hair became his full-time job. So he's been tending to the trusses of famous faces like Giselle Bundchen, Rose Byrne, Kate Bosworth, Helena Christensen, Irina Sheik, and Carly Kloss. His range of hair tools are consistently considered to be must-haves. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Very Thank cool you. to be on a panel with these two guys. So for me, it's really Thanks. exciting because uh, I definitely they have a way more experience than I do. So for me to be sitting with these guys on this call makes me feel really honored and special because I am definitely uh, a different generation. So I feel really amazed to be sitting with both of you guys. So Thank you to both Frederick and Sally. Thank you. It's an Thank honor you. to be with you. It's nice that to have a to, to bring our, our age average down here. Thank you. <laughs> I love we love Harry. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> it's following their footsteps. Really, they feed, feed, both of them have paved the way for the next generation and the generation following to take hairdressing from uh, you know, an ordinary career, or sorry, an ordinary job to an extraordinary career. Um, so I think it's really great. And I think these guys were pioneers with taking not just their regular craft but turning it into a way to, to get serve and give back right by giving you by creating products we as hairdressers are serving people to making them feel good about themselves every every day so whether it be if you feel bad about your frizzy hair or your flat hair or your not enough texture hair that's what we do we create products that are going to make people feel good about themselves and empower themselves a lot and we all have experience and i think that plays a big part in who we're going to listen to going forward in this new COVID time. You know what I mean? I think we're, we have had a wonderful time of having uh, influencers uh, grow and expand with you know, real people trying real products. But I think the pendulum might just shift back into uh, experts, people that truly were at the front lines, if you will, of cutting hair, styling hair, understanding what women's needs are. Um, and I think that because as hairdressers, we work on a multitude of people, we really do have a different narrative and a different voice than maybe an influencer who might have 10 million followers, but she's doing the products and looks on her one set of hair. So I do think we do value, uh, do, do bring value to them. And as they do to their audiences as well, there's room for everybody. And I think um, I'm excited for us as hairdressers to be able to dive into this COVID and really empower women to take care of themselves and not rely, you know, so much on having to, you know, be high maintenance ladies. I love the love fest for one though. You guys are also great and it seems like you uh, have all shared the love. So I appreciate that. <laughs> it's wonderful. So that being said, I'm gonna get into 
with the right color, the right style, the right products, you can go from having a basic day to feeling like a million bucks. So is that partially why you all got involved in the industry? And if not, um, is that why you stay in the industry to make people, people feel good? So Harry, let's start with you and then we'll go to Sally and Frederick. Okay. I mean, honestly, I think that I, I'm pretty sure we're all going to say the same thing. Uh, when you are a hair, hairdresser, it is a very, it feels fantastic because there's not a lot of jobs you're going to do on the planet where every 45 minutes or one hour, you're going to get praise. It's constant admiration all day long. Someone comes into your chair, they're feeling a certain way. An hour later, they feel a lot different and they are eternally grateful for the way you've made them feel in that one hour time slot. So you have this sense of uh, pleasure, of joy that, my God, look how every hour you get a boost of like, wow, I just made that person look great. I made that person look great. I made that person look great. So we do get addicted to feeling good about giving. So again, tying back into service. Um, I know uh, there's so many ways of looking at a hairdresser, especially now on social media, we see you know, the glitz, the glamour, and people traveling and going on jobs and boats and being in shape and feeling like they're their own celebrities. But the heart of what we do is for the real person. It's the real woman that's at home. That's the bulk of this planet. You know what I mean? The celebrities and the models that we've all worked on is just like a, a, a fun in the mix of it all. But the real joy comes from sitting at a salon and making people feel so good that hour after hour you get not only a, you know, a tip in your pocket, but a hug and a kiss being like, I feel fantastic, thank you. And that's a really amazing job to have when you think of the realm of jobs. And Sally? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you, Harry basically said it as you said you were going to, but uh, I mean, for me, you know, beauty is hair, but it's so many other things. I love looking at great hair. I love helping people look the best that they can, yet still be themselves. I don't like to, you know what I mean? Like. I love when someone comes to the salon, I actually see them before they put on the robe because then I get a sense of, you know, their style. And I love to take women and make them feel just maybe a little fresher, hopefully a little younger. That's what they always tell me. But, <laughs> and also, you know, I worked a lot in fashion alongside with being in the salon. I love both. They're so different. I think being on a shoot is much more intense. You know, you have... Annie Leibovitz, <laughs> Frederick and I have been on shoots with her. And, you know, it's much more intense when you have someone of that stature, Stephen Klein, Stephen Mizell, Abaddon, whatever, all the greats. There's a lot of pressure. And it's a very different thing. You have to really be a team. It's a full team production, you know? Yeah. And you're just a minuscule of that, you know? And you are basically being told what to do in many ways. You do what you do, but you're also, you know, you're, the photographer has the vision and Vogue has the vision. So, and I love going to the salon because it was a, more relaxed for me. You know, it's like, I'm my boss, you know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Yeah, I so great. I've always, and I also like going to the salon because you get paid right away. You know, when you're on push, <laughs> you know, an editorial doesn't pay. And so, you know, you wait for the big campaigns, but that can take months and months and months. It's harder to live like that, I found. So you go pop into the salon, you get your money, you get your tips, and you know, it's, it was a great way, and I still do it, actually. I'm still doing both very much so. Yeah. Fred, <laughs> of course, I will echo very much what Harry and uh, Sally said, you know, uh, the, the, the rewarding thing for me is uh, the fact that I can guide my customer to have a look that they identify with and that they can reproduce at home. Because making them beautiful is one thing, but if they cannot repeat it at home, it's like just you know a, a stamp, if I will. And uh, uh, I think the, the rewarding is the fact that you know you can create a look that is uh, personalized, bespoke to them, but that they can really easily uh, take care of at home. And, you know, and tell them also what to do, the, the maintenance, uh, what product to use, how, how uh, when to come back for a color or haircut, but also going beyond hair. It's like, 
if you have a tips, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a fashion stylist or a makeup artist or anything like that, but if you have a tip, I would love to give it to them. You know, uh, finding a cool pair of glasses, uh, like actually, Sally, I love your glasses, by the way, Sally. Um, oh, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, but, you know, or, 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 or let them know about, you know, uh, just having a, a different manicure or just a, a tip on makeup, anything. But it has to be something that it resonates and they can identify with them. So. Very cool. We're in this really interesting, uh, unusual time. So how have you all managed to pivot with your different businesses and also, you know, seeing people in person, how does that look for you? And uh, maybe we could start with Sally and then go to Frederick and Harry. Well, it, it actually, you know, I, I had a very successful quarantine. I mean, oddly, wasn't planned. Nothing I do is very much planned because so many things are always changing. But I, Jimmy Fallon actually called me and he said, I want you to do a virtual haircut on the show. So you know what I mean? I talk him through it. And so I brought all my stuff down. We rushed it. And then he got like tied up. And then Miley Cyrus um, wrote on my Instagram, she just ruined her bangs. So then I guided her through a haircut, which is so hard. And then I did Vogue. I did Le uh, Lena Dunham for Vogue. And then it became like this thing that I was doing on people, the guy, uh, drawing a blank on his name, but I was started doing a lot of virtual haircuts and there was a lot of buzz around that and a lot of conversation about how to open the salon. So I was literally doing press every single day, literally. Um, and it became a conversation that I had no intention. It was the busiest I had been, you know, cause I, I don't work every day anymore. You know what I mean? I like to have a little bit of a Hamptons time, but it, um, it, it created something new and I'm doing a lot more from that. And I started Supreme Head, my agency, which is because I knew we were gonna go back and the capacity is at 50%. So you have a salon, we're down 50% because you're, yeah. you have to work six feet apart. I don't know how many people are gonna survive that. You get uh, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like unless, you know, things get better and these they, they relax on the rules. I don't know how any business, let alone a hair business. Yeah. Where you in have this New York City, a cafeteria, a restaurant, you're, you're paying so much rent, even at half capacity, you're yeah. never going to make it. And you know, for right now, we're all going back because I'm sure I did. I got PPP money and I think I know search. I did it. too. Yeah. 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 And, but so I opened Supreme Head. It's like a concierge within the salon. And it's really taking off because a lot of women and men can't come to a salon because of health issues. You know, if they have asthma, if they're older. So it's a uh. way to really support the client and the salon and the hairdresser because when they negotiate themselves, it's a disaster. Harry, you know, you were an agent, you know. Absolutely. And I no, own- Definitely Wall makes a difference. Yeah, I started the Wall Group in LA. I'm very familiar with agencies and I think it's better that you don't discuss the money. Like we take care of it, how they're getting there, the travel time, all of the uh, little things that happen in a booking. And you keep it in the salon and you keep the hairdresser happy. Everyone's happy and you, you know, you only take 15% off the hairdresser, so. Yeah, like, it's a good system. Yeah, yeah that's what I, I was doing. I think it's gonna be a challenge going on for everyone, as you saw on the news, I mean, many business are, are, are basically out of business. You know, Neiman Marcus is chapter 11, Hertz is gone. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's gonna be, obviously, uh, it's not going to be, it's changing, the world is changing. And for us, as you, Harry mentioned, you know, you have full rent, you know, 50% capacity, um, it's, it, 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 it's uh, we have to navigate that and hopefully, you know, uh, we get out of this uh, quickly because it's it's not sustainable. But as as uh, uh, Sally pointed out, you know, I've done as well a lot of uh, tutorial and a lot of uh, helping, if I could, virtually to get people, you know, a band aid about doing a little trim here and there um, or do some color and stuff like that. But you know, at the end of the day, we need to get you know, our expert back to full 
uh, and no more capacity uh, to to get a, a business uh, you know healthy and uh, sustainable but you know it's a, it's a tough business uh, and uh, i think we're just going to have to come through it uh, with uh, as little damage as possible but some of our colleagues already are feeling the pain earlier than we do and um, you know getting out of business so that 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 is a, you know that is certainly a different life a different time it, it, it really is Frederick, it was tough even before this to yes. be really honest like mm -hmm. is, is it's very rare you make money and when you do they usually oh. leave and go open another salon right when it's like cooking right so yeah. you're dealing with a lot of people mm -hmm. that you depend on to make money for your business and they don't yeah. understand unless you're an owner how much color gets wasted all the things that go into it i mean your color bills or more than a, half a home, they're what, five, six hundred thousand dollars a year for one salon. I mean, there's so much and the rents are extraordinary. So we really as owners need to be supported. Going back into this, it's going to be very different for me as an owner because I'm not going back the way it was because there's no point in having a salon that doesn't make money. Do you know what I mean? There's not, and I yeah. know church fills it. I mean, we all do, you know. For sure. I mean, like for me, just because I don't spend a lot of time in the salon, it's been a great time for me during COVID because I've been actually been able to really spend more time with my R&D team and my engineers and marketing team to kind of plan out what will be the plan. We obviously had stuff planned, but now it's all been pushed because we're like, this is not the right time to, to launch something, you know, and everything's being moved and we're trying to like, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle and be like, when is the best time to launch this? And, you know, but I will say in the midst of however, whatever darkness we're all feeling from seeing uh, the news and it's just what we see with our eyes and what we hear with our ears, I do have faith. I have this weird sense of unwavering faith that everything is going to work out, not only good, but great for the entire planet. And I don't know how I feel this way. And I know all we see is nothing, but it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. But somehow the Phoenix will rise and we will all be in a much better place mentally, uh, just in every way. And I think our businesses will flourish and I think people's emotions will flourish. And I think that we really will get through this as hard as it will be. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. It's going to be hard. And I think it may even not even get as bad as it still could potentially get worse. But having in the back of your head, that seed, that nugget that tells you, yes, we can get through this. We're going to be in a great place. If you hold on to that, or I certainly have for myself, it's really kept me in a very good vibration about what's going on and about my business. Even though reports are coming in saying X, Y, Z, I don't even think about it. I'm like, nope, I'm only going to think about what the end result is. I know what I'm bringing to the table. I know yeah. the service I'm providing. And I know that this is you know, when you make it, they will come. And I know that I'm sitting with two other hairdressers who have very good experience with that because they made things they knew people needed and that's why they're here today. So I am very hopeful, even during this COVID time. So this time has been really great for me to regenerate as a, as a brand. And, and you know. restructure. I mean, I feel yeah. like I was able to restructure how I'm going to reopen um, all my businesses. So I, during that time, we had a lot of time and it was great for me to restructure. So I'm going back in a better situation. Minus the 50% capacity. Um, <laughs> minus that. But I do have big salons. or 6,000 square feet. So except for the one uptown. So there is a lot of room. And we're open seven days a week. And later hours, earlier mornings. So, so you can fill it up. You can make up with the longer hours. Yeah, we're, we figure that out. I mean, there's a yeah. lot. And also, Frederick, you, you, you know, I'm going to do the plexiglass because then you can have all the chairs full. If you do plexiglass between, because I pulled out each chair, so I'm six feet apart, but you can be closer if you have the plexiglass in between. Yeah. Yes, I think that's what's happening uh, where I work. Yeah. 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 So, plexiglass. You know, uh, in, our okay. <laughs> in our salons, you know, um, we did put plexiglass. Um, more at the shampoo area, and yeah. uh, uh, and uh, I have to say, it's uh, we also staggering the shift with the stylist and opening seven days a week to try to make the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, we 
we're getting there, but it's not there yet. But we're getting there. And um, I, I have to say, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see that uh, everybody is putting uh, their effort together there, you know, and I'm glad to see how optimistic you are, Harry, and uh, I, I, I'm going to take a lesson. <laughs> I, I, I have no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm no reason to be other than just something I feel, and I've always trusted my gut my whole life, so I have to just... It, it's the right attitude. Uh, Tunnel it's vision. Right attitude. It, it's, a, it's the right attitude. I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, we have no choice, okay? And uh, we're going to have to do... My attitude is this. We have to excel at what we can control, the thing that we cannot control, it's, it's out of our control. So, you know, let's not worry about it, okay? And those are the rent, the taxes, oh, yeah. <laughs> all the other stuff. So I, I think we need to do what we know best, you know, and treat the people uh, that work with us and the customer uh, with the best intention and sure. everyone. And I, I think you're right. I think, you know, uh, we are human. Humanity is a great, I mean, great species. We have yeah. to make it happen. We have to make it, you know, this planet a better place. Um, it has been, you know, if you look at the positive of this confinement and the lockdown, uh, you know, you have to look at the positive is the fact that, you know, uh, the pollution is better. The mm -hmm. environment is better. Uh, the stress level is better. Um, People are healthier, I think, you know. Um, I, I think we know we need to take lesson out of this. And, and we also learned, I mean, and not, we're talking for the corporate now, uh, at the corporate level, we learned that we can, we can work from home. Zoom yeah. has been a great friend. Yeah. Zoom has been a very helpful, uh, it's, helpful it's helpful right now, uh, you know, it, it's, Life is changing. We have to be agile. We have to be, you know, uh, flexible. We have to be uh, modern. We have to be, uh, you know, uh, optimistic, as you said, and uh, things will come true. So it sounds like you all have a pretty great handle on the present, but how are you looking to the future with your respective brands? And have any needs come from the quarantine that you've found lacking in the industry that you want or you are creating um, for the future. Uh, why don't we start with Harry, then go to Sally and Frederick. Um, I think, no, that COVID has done nothing new that would make me feel that I need to invent something different. I am very methodical with the launches that I make. I really just make the bare essentials. Um, it doesn't necessarily make for a great business model uh, because my business model, when you would look at it, most uh, you know, CVs or investors would be like, this is, doesn't make sense to us. Why you would want to put every bell and whistle and expensive part on an item with less profit because you're manufacturing it in the most, you know, expensive place. Cause my, you know, my dryers are made in France, my irons are made in Korea. So instead of me going to where they mass manufacture where all the big dogs go, cause that's how you make profit. You want a product that can be broken and replaced. That's how you make money. So you want every year a new curling iron. You want every, you know, six months, two years, whatever, the max it is. And you're just like, oh, it's not that expensive. No big deal. I'll go buy another one. So here I am trying to change the sustainability factor of how my products are going to be launched. The, the, the I mean, each piece of, uh, you know, whether it be a, a curling iron or a flat iron or anything I do, we have, it's literally luxury. It's like the Hermes of tools. So our electrical components are different than all the other ones that are on the marketplace. They're larger, they conduct better heat. I have copper wire um, induction. So I've thought of a lot of things that I think that people will, I feel the future is gonna be about people investing instead of repeating buying junky things like fast fashion. A lot of people like, you know, we're, I think we're ending the fast fashion and I think we're gonna probably end the fast beauty too. Where these $1, $2 products that are like, you know, I think that people will start to realize it's better to save money buy something good, use it properly, and really maximize the use out of that product to get m the most bang for your buck, um, if you will. Not only will it be uh, in this in form of performance, because you're gonna speed up your time if you're using a good tool, you're not gonna be using a crappy drugstore you know, item, you're gonna be using something that's you know, luxury made by a hairdresser who's thought about what's the best thing 
for that consumer to get the end result as quickly as they can do it, as salon quality as they can get it, and out the door. So there's nothing new in COVID that's taught me that that woman needs anything different than what I've provided for her already, um, other than expansion of tools, which I am working on. Like, uh, you know, incrementally we grow, but you'd be surprised at how much it costs to create a mold of one item uh, to try. And if it doesn't work, then it's just garbage money. You try again. So it's not a very, uh, you know, it's, it's just a very complicated business. And, and you have to be very mindful of what you're launching and what you don't want to be stuck with product. And I'm sure both of these guys below can tell you that too. When you're stuck with a product that you're like, great, this is like everything else is moving except this one thing. And I have 400 million of these. What am I going to do with these? You know, so that's something anyone who runs a brand is very aware of is really trying to create what you think are the basics that someone is going to need and not trying to get too much into the gimmicky things that are hot at the moment. You know what I mean? Like some, you know, and especially in our industries, there's always like a new ingredient that we always hear about in skincare or something like that. This is yeah. the nut oil from the Amazon that reduces wrinkles and they've just discovered it. And that's how our industry works, right? So I think we're going to a place where there's going to be People will hopefully be more transparent. Um, I feel like we'll have a little more brand transparency. I think people are going to look for that going forward. I think people want to look a little bit deeper into their brands that they're purchasing, what they're buying, sustainability, all that stuff. I know, Frederick, I, from what I know already a little bit about the relaunch of your brand, you had a big part of that as well. So I think you did your packaging. Someone had told me in that way as yeah. well. Yeah. Is that correct? No, and that that's, that's to me, I mean, I, I don't want to take the... The, the limelight here and, uh, and uh, the one thing that I learned is uh, very important to me is that coming back, you know, I just bought a company back 20 months ago. I didn't know I was going to run into this, but like anybody else. But one thing I knew is that I, would not, I was not going to do the same thing as I did before. And uh, to do a product, but a product that uh, uh, take care, takes care of the the people makes people great, but also the planet. And that was very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to be disgusted by, uh, you know, uh, what we do as human to this planet, you know, the, the amount of waste on plastic and, uh, the, and, uh, and even, you know, just ingredients that we use that are cheap, but, you know, uh, costly effective, I would say, but uh, not so good for, for our health or for the planet. So to me, that was a mission. I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I was going to bring something to the market that uh, people will feel good about, will feel proud. I think what I learned from this is like, let's do things that we are proud of and that we're not doing for just the bottom line. Of course, mm -hmm. we are in business. We need to make money. I'm not kidding. I'm not going to scare my investors here. But, but you know what? <laughs> I, 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 I want to make sure we do it in an intelligent way so that people feel like, wow, somebody is, uh, you know, checking the box on being responsible, accountable to make, yeah. to make us and the planet a much better environment. Um, so I think, you know, COVID is, uh, it, it, it has reinforced that. It's like, you know, let's find out how we can also uh, help our customer uh, when they cannot come to the salon. What can we do for that? You know, so finding product that they can maybe facilitate, uh, you know, uh, being at home long down to feel glamorous, to feel that, that vanity is still there and uh, to make sure that, you know, that uh, they don't have to be so dependent on uh, being in the salon. Sally, how about you? I mean, uh, so, I, you know, I have actually have to start thinking about it. Um, I actually did, I did three partnerships during COVID that I can't speak about yet, but <laughs> they're all very scientific. I'm doing a much, it's very, it's very, um, it is new. I'm, you know, I'm, I have my classic collection, which is, you know, for me, it's all about clean, like cleaning the scalp, cleaning the hair and all of that. Um, but this is, the lines that I'm doing with different people are much more sophisticated than I am. It's, it's very different, but very um, exciting. I'm very excited, but they're, yeah, they're three different companies that are incredibly successful already. 
in the beauty industry. Um, so yeah, I did those, but I can't, you know, say what they are yet. But at the minute I can, you'll, you'll hear about it. <laughs> well, good, good luck with that, Sally. Yeah, Thank you. So I'm Sally. super excited about it. They're very, it's just very different. You know, it's yeah. a little bit cool. um, different for me, so to speak. And I actually do feel like we're going to have a rebirth of everything uh, again from this COVID yeah. experience. I feel like it, what, the, what it's done is it's given so much people just time to think about life in a way that they've no one's had this much idle time in their brain by themselves in a long time well probably ever yeah. you and at I the same know. time yeah <laughs> so i feel like that's really made people uh rethink their priorities what's important i know there's lots of people moving all over the country really planning being like i'm moving east to west i'm moving north to right. south i'm going to live in the country i'm gonna give this up you know people are having these feelings it's like gonna there's an awakening going on, you know what I mean? With everybody about many things, you know, your emotional life, your personal life, your business life, your spiritual life. Are you spiritual? Are you not spiritual? Like you're questioning everything right now because there's so much info out there and you're just kind of like taking it all and kind of processing through it all. So I do think the beauty industry and the hair industry, we're going to have some innovative thinking. And I think it's going to come out in the next five, six, seven years, just how like Sally's talking to two mystery chemists right now or whatever, you know what I mean? Like we're going to get some great stuff that's going to come out of this. And I think we needed to uh, hit rock bottom as an earth. And we are, we have, and we're on our, you know, ascension, if you will, <laughs> hopefully back to a wonderful place. Yes. <laughs> so with all of these changes that you are all seeing and, you know, going back to a good place. Do you think that that's gonna change the consumer in the long run? Are they getting savvier about doing their own hair? Are they gonna be going to the salon as much? Are they gonna be trying things at home? What do you think that looks like? I think it's gonna be everything. I, I think we're just gonna have a, a flurry of activity. I think people that never wanted to go to a salon are gonna to wanna to go to a salon. I think people that always went to a salon that learned how to use something during their COVID, like, you know, working out for, that's a really interesting thing. Like so many people who thought they couldn't live without a gym. Well, if you look at Instagram, everyone's working out all day, every day, and everyone's maintained their bodies the way they never thought they could. And there's been so much innovation with working out at home. You know what I mean? So why wouldn't that translate into some form of beauty as well? So I think people are gonna get inspired. People are gonna, you know, moms are gonna blow dry each other, their daughter's hair or blow it out. They're gonna, you know, use some good hair products and they're gonna go less. And then there's gonna be other people where new jobs are created and new wealth is created for people who never had money and they're gonna to wanna to spend their money and go get serviced. Because the world is gonna change and these new jobs are gonna appear out of nowhere and old jobs are gonna disappear and it's just gonna be a shakeup. So I think we're, we're, no matter what, I feel so grateful to be in the beauty and especially specifically hair. Hair is a ephemeral physical thing. It's constantly changing. You know what I mean? So like, we're always, always gonna have a job. Always need hair done. Always, always. We got we're lucky. We're always gonna need to do yeah. it. You know what I mean? We're always gonna be needed, no matter what. I mean, what you know about what I mean? protesting for to get? They wanted to get their hair done in the salon. So <laughs> <protesting>. <laughs> that was funny, you but you know, so that's the thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm still very it helpful. You feel good though to get your hair done. It makes you for sure. Good. I feel it. We I'm all feel it. Done tomorrow. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know, one thing important is that we realize that at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's more than just hair, it's more than beauty. It's about self-confidence. It's about feeling great about yourself. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a mental thing. Vanity is a mental thing, you know, like what you just said earlier, you don't like to see yourself in Zoom, so do I. I don't want to look myself in Zoom, you know, <laughs> but, 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 you know, I think we have to realize that, you know, we have no choice. We have to uh, take care of our appearance. We have to, mm -hmm. to feel good, you know, and uh, to feel good beauty and health wise, you know, you want to make sure that your health feels clean, healthy. You want to make sure you, your color looks great and vibrant. You want to make sure you know, that, uh, you know, uh, you are, you know, somehow, I want to use the word groomed, you know, pampered, you know, I mean, you it's it's nurtured exactly. it's they're nurtured you're, you're nurturing yourself it's self-care yes. and it's not always in a vanity way 
Yeah. Right. And I think that's the fine line that, you know, sometimes we get that, that, that confusion happens a lot through social media too, where it's like, you know what I mean? You have to be this much to feel like you've gotten yourself together, but that's not the truth. It's like what Sally was saying earlier. She just wants her ladies to give them the best version of them. You know what I mean? She's not looking to transform somebody like, you know what I mean? She's not going to, you know, whatever. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, that's what it is. It's just what Frederick's saying. It's empowering these women to feel their best version. You know, feeling good doesn't need to be, you know, going platinum or shaving your head. It could just be getting a great blow dry and a great conversation and a few face framing layers that you haven't had in three years and you just feel like a different person. Yeah. You know? Yes, and also if you think about it, is also, you know, we all like to be, you know, the attention. You know, you want to make sure people pay attention to us, okay? So if you don't do an effort, you know, to feel noticeable, you, you, you feel like you, you're missing your life. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, vanity is, a, is maybe a, a, a bigger word than, than we think about, but it's about, you know, feeling great feeling that we are recognized, that we are, you know, uh, noticed. And, uh, and, and this is why our business is a, is a flourishing business. Uh, and it will be more and more now because, you know, uh, uh, people are, even if the social distancing, you know, there's now many ways where actually I've seen more people on Zoom that I usually see uh, in real life. <laughs> so, Very so, true. So, so you have to, to pay attention to that. Well, since we're talking about um, the fact that we are always going to need to go to the salon because we do very much need all of you very much, um, can perhaps you share some hacks for the people that cannot get to a salon just yet because things haven't opened up yet or because things have opened up and shut down already? Um, Maybe Harry, Sally, Frederick will go that order. I don't have a great hair hack. I mean, I, I'm going to put this all on Sally because this is literally what she's been doing for the last like few months is teaching people to do their own things. So I'm going to pass the baton to her. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'll just reiterate that, um, you know, I would have the girlfriend or boyfriend like Miley Cyrus shaved uh, Cody's ha hair off. You know, you have to, they, may, they have to have the clippers and the scissors and it's best if another person's there, but shaving or doing like a man's haircut's relatively easy. You clip this up and then you, you know, say put a number six on and you know, you guide them through that for the most part. Doing it is incredibly hard. So I like to just do the basic, you know, like pull the hair like right here and just nip it. Pull this down and just twist it and cut it. You know, just the minimum, the bare minimum. So I'm not like giving some major haircut, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> You're like elevate the corner. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've tried that. It's so hard. I mean, graduate the bottom. <laughs> that have paid me to do this, but. And it's so, it's comical because the mother's over here, the sister's like with the phone trying to do it. And then as Frederick said earlier, you know, products go a long way. They really sustain your hairstyle, you know, and mm -hmm. especially if you go to the right salon and have the right hairdresser, I'm very much of the school of Frederick, which is show them what you did. So when they go home, they can du duplicate duplicate that and it makes you look good and they look good if i do their hair and it looks amazing they leave and they go somewhere a week ago and they go oh sally cut my hair and it looks like shit do you know what i mean there's no benefit in that for me or my client so i know that we both really like to show our clients how to achieve those looks and harry's a perfect person you have the right iron you have the right tools they can do a lot of that with at home with Harry's tools, with your products, you know what I mean? And you don't have to be living in the salon like all the women that got the blow dries all the time. Another thing that's really funny, so many of my clients have like gray skunk hair and a lot of them are like, <laughs> they're like, I, they kind of look good. Some of them look good with the, the gray, if they have pretty gray hair, you know? I mean, I'm always like color your hair, but there's a few that actually, 
embraced it and looked kind of nice with it. So I think that, um, you know, they might just put a few silvers to blend it as it's growing in. Donna mm -hmm. Karen was one. She's like, I, I mean, because she has that like olive skin and blue eyes that look kind of nice on her. But anyway, um, so those are my tips. Pass yeah. it to you. No, I think, I think, you know, it's, you know, during this time, obviously, as you pointed out, it's not about doing a makeover or something drastic. It's about maintenance. It's about helping them with their little tips. You know, if they have, uh, uh, if they need desperately uh, a hair color, maybe change the part, not making any part, making the hair tassel so that it's a limiting a little bit of the, the exposure of the roots, whether it's gray or another co other color. But also, you know, we see, uh, I did a few tutorial where I help people just do a little trim here and there to, to, give, to get them to the next three, four weeks, uh, hoping that the salon will open and uh, doing things like that. Um, I did some tutorial live uh, and, and expected a friend of mine call me on FaceTime and uh, 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 she was cutting the hair of her boyfriend and she was panicking because he was uh, already... Uh, down the line with uh, some mistake. And uh, so I had to try to uh, uh, recover that situation. That was very funny, but uh, uh, we went through this. It was great to do, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, we are, you know, it's the unknown. It's, it's quite scary. We just going through something we never done before. So, so, so we just, just learning, learning how to, to navigate this and try to help people, um, I'm sure. I'm sure the second pandemic uh, will not be the same. Uh, we are now somehow we are warmed up. We we've been there, so we'll, I'm sure not just us, but even the government are not going to make the same mistake. You know, um, so we're going to learn from this. Let's hope. Oh, I think New York will. I don't know about some of those other states. You know what I mean? It's a it's a little bit sad because it affects the world when that yeah. happens. If it, yeah. if if we all came together and just did it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it would be a better solution. But it, leaving it up to different governors that are not protecting their people is you know don't get me started. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm praying for the best because you know I want everybody to be healthy and live a long life. You know, and yeah. so, I know, I know. We have to do the right thing. I mean individually we have to take that responsibility and do what we need to do because you can't control other people you know clearly 100 percent. yeah well sally it seems like you have a bit of a game changer on your hands with supreme head agency so maybe you could tell us you touched on it a little bit but tell us a little bit more about what exactly it is and who you're catering to and where you want to take it so you know i'm not trying to compete with like the big you know, agencies, because it's really about being a concierge within the salon. Um, it's, and they're not like, they're stylists, but they're not like from the fashion world, you know? And the clients need to get their hair done. They're desperate. I mean, they call, especially now, like the people that want color, I think color's more in demand than cutting, to be honest with you. Everyone's like, I need my hair color. So, what we'll provide is having hairdressers go to their house and still maintain the quarantine rules. You know, everyone's wearing a mask, sanitizing, all their equipment gets sanitized every time they use it. And we have people to answer the phones that know exactly how to bill for it. Um, we were charging double because think about it, you're going out of the salon, you're going mm -hmm. to the house, you have to set up, you know, it takes time. And um, so we're providing a service that is mandatory. You need that, you know? And so many people were already start, hairdressers were starting to do that on their own. And I didn't want to be responsible for that. You know, we'll have, you know, you have to sign off on it when they arrive. I didn't want them using my name and going into people's houses. And a lot of hairdressers did it before we were really meant to. Um, which made me uncomfortable having them come into my salon. So I had to get some rules going on here. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and a lot of, I just want to say, I don't know if you've seen it, but a, because of the unemployment so high, a lot of ha hairdressers that are newly 
going in on the floor or assistance, they don't want to go back because then they don't get their unemployment and they're making more on unemployment. I mean, you're making $4,300 a month. It's a lot of money for like, a, you know, 18 year old getting into a salon because when they're on payroll, they're not, you know what I mean? You pay them minimum wage and whatever. So that's been very interesting. Um, so, you know, there's like things going on, but what they don't know, which hopefully they're watching this, is that you can work part-time because I don't need full-time because, you know, we're staggering. They can still get their unemployment until it runs out in July. <laughs> but they, <laughs> they, like now. people need to know that they may not have their jobs when they come back because you are taking a risk by not coming back to work. And it's not just in my industry. It's, you know, it's happening in a lot of places. And the amount of jobs are going to be a lot less right now that obviously will change. Like restaurants are not able to stay open. A lot of them, you know, people got hit really hard. The food chains. I mean, it's not just the restaurant, it's the food that got, you know, there's so much more to this story that we're all, everybody in the world has taken a big hit. You know, the travel, we can't go to, I want to go to Italy this summer, you know, they won't let us in. Did you yeah. They don't want the Americans yeah. coming in. It's changing. Everything is changing. You know, the EU obviously now doesn't want any traveler from um, from the US, from Russia, from Brazil, and 12 other countries. So I can't believe that the US comes even with the third third world countries. I mean, it's crazy. So, yeah. but, but you know, um, it's it's interesting. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't want to be pessimistic, but, you know, we're going to have to to think differently. I mean, our business model is uh, is uh, at risk. Uh, people, as you said, uh, uh, Sally, you know, uh, got the taste of uh, uh, not working and, you know, they barely don't want to come back. I mean, you know, uh, uh, unless you have a family to to feed, some people are just, you know, uh, not, not interested. Um, but, um, you know, the, the good news, the good news is this. The good news is that, you know, uh, we have been able to uh, use more, uh, and I'm talking about product and also services. We are using more and more our digital brand marketing. We are using more our social media. We are using more our D2C. Uh, and the D2C is on fire with us, which, you know, it pushed us to be uh, more sophisticated, to more efficient to be more performant. So the D2C, uh, you know, fin finally with this, we just realized that we had no other choice but to communicate and service our customer uh, through uh, virtually. So it, 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 there is a good plus to that. Hopefully it's there to stay and to grow. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, the service part is, uh, it, it's, it's going to be it's going to be there to stay. Obviously, the 50% is right now, but uh, let's just hope that, uh, you know, everybody respects uh, uh, the, everyone else by putting a mask and being safe so that we can just have this COVID-19 behind us. And let's hope for some more money from the government. Yeah. Forgivable, more forgivable money. So, Did you guys hear really quickly that there was, a, there was a salon that these two girls did about 150 people and they all wore masks and it turned out they had COVID, the two hairdressers and 150 people, not one got um, Corona from them. Wow. Yeah, so the they all had masks and they, you know, were very like clear. So I think, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but it seems the mask really, it makes sense if someone breathes, like if you're wearing a pair of jeans, right. And the other person doesn't have jeans, any pants on, and you wet your pants and you touch them, it's going to go on them. But if they have pants, you have pants. You know what I mean? It's less likely to go in there. I mean, if you just think about it logically, it makes sense to wear masks. So okay. let's hope that everyone stays safe and um, the government gives more money and they'll have to. I mean, yeah, we, I think they will. And I, honestly, I don't foresee them not doing that. I actually feel very confident that. It, we will get more unforgivable uh, money as well. 
it won't be like loans. It will be like, we just want you to keep your business afloat. Here's some money. Right. For, I mean, because- I was like, what universe is Harry Josh living on? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know how much the government can afford. You know, this is already many trillions. I don't know the number, if it's three or six, I forgot, but it's a lot of money. I, I don't think we can do that twice. I, I don't want to be pessimist, but uh, yeah. if we do that, that means that means we're going to have to pay back with huge taxes later on. So, and this is going to happen anyway. So, uh, there's no shortcut. There's no yeah. free run. There's no free lunch. Sorry. And uh, <laughs> so, so let's let's be careful with that. Yeah, I mean it's a tricky thing. It is, I think it's three tr trillion and. Uh, I mean, it gets complicated because they're just printing money that we really don't even have. I mean, it's interesting. You can just go print money and then give it. But uh, I think they gave away too much money, personally. I mean, they gave a lot of, lot of money out. You know what I mean? What about they gave it to a million point five or uh, dead people? The, the government would gave out all this money to dead people. They didn't know they were dead and they just figured it out. They didn't look at their social security. So they were really like <laughs> shelling out the money. Wow. That's funny. And it does affect you later <laughs> in taxes. So we have to be careful and make some money. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we have time for one last question. Um, and I think we have established, I mean, a lot of industries are going under, unfortunately but hair care is not going to be one of them because there is an essential need for hair care because it makes people feel good. Um, but in your opinions, why is the hair care industry more important than ever? And let's start with Sally, then go to Frederick and Harry. Um, well, I think it, what you said is out so true. I mean, they're saying that hair, you know, skincare always did better than hair care, but now, Skincare is like kind of maxed out. So now hair care is like a light bulb has gone off. There is so much room for growth. And I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't wear makeup really. So I'm all about the hair. Like if my hair doesn't look good, I don't feel confident. And I'm not just saying that. That's how I got into hair. I was so obsessed. I'd go into parties and if it had been raining, I used to wear my hair poker straight. I'd go in the bath and find the blow dryer and like re-blow dryer and go back out, you know. But I think that, and, and product, 50% of great hair is the product you use. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't wear my hair wash and go. Me neither. No way. No way. I don't know That's anybody what, yeah. who can wash and go. It Everybody just needs something. Flat. I couldn't yeah. have like tumbly, you know, like. I have three products in mine. <laughs> right? Like, if I'm like this, my hair will do, you know, like whatever. I mean, you know, yeah. I like things, I like hair that moves and feels alive. And, and when you just wash and go, it's a little like, you know, you need one few more things. You need a, a bit of guts in that hair. Yeah. What I just did in mine, but okay. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> so that's my opinion. Well, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the hair, if you think about it, it's a, it's a, it, it does affect our face. It does affect our silhouette. The weather changed the way the hair does. If you don't do the right shampoo, the right conditioner, your hair behaves differently. If, mm -hmm. if you meet outside, it freezes up. If you are, uh, if you are, uh, you know, if you, if you don't do the right thing, your hair can be flat. So the hair can really change the way you look. It can put you down, or it can 100%. just it just can just lift your spirit. Yeah. And uh, and I, I've even touched the color. If you do the color, you know. By doing certain color, you can just make your hair more vibrant, more f flattering, more fun, more daring, more eccentric, whatever it is that you want to do. But hair gives you a great label right away. Skin, of course, with makeup, you can do that. Uh, but but it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's good, but it's, it's strong as well. But I think we've been there. We've seen it. Everybody has seen it. So it's been overdone, oversaturated. But hair is a, it's something that, uh, you know, move, make a yeah. breath move, hair moves. Hair is sexy. Yeah. 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 Sexy. You know what I mean? Like hair is like a cool thing. Yeah. It could be a geeky thing too, but that's okay. Yeah, but yeah. No, for sure. It says so much about you, I think. 
in a way that you kind of know if someone's more of a politician or someone's, you know, like a rock star. You, it, it gives you like a sense that you kind of get a sense of someone about how they wear their hair, how it looks. I think I can kind of. I like agree. It. I agree. I think it really is defining uh, a little bit of their character for sure. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you can give a client a radical haircut and they present differently. Yeah. They get out of the chair differently. They yeah. come back after dropping off their robe and putting on their street clothes and being like, I have to go shopping because this is like giving me something that this is not, you know what yeah. I mean? So we have that ability of transformation as well. So um, going back to the original question, which is like, you know, COVID at home and all that stuff, I think because things are going to be, people are going to lose certain things where they can't put efforts on that. I'm, I'm also agreeing for starters with both what Frederick and Sally say. So instead of me repeating that, I'm going to add to that, which would be that I do think that because things are going to be like, not everyone's going to have the same things like they had the money to do like, sporting events might change so that might be a money save and uh concerts and you know there might be places where people all of a sudden have this disposable income and time because they can't do the things they used to and that is like they already said all the great things about it so that's just one extra reason to be like i'll it's your hair is your crown and glory so you may want to take care of your crown you know oh well said yeah. what what a great yeah. thing to go out on there right <laughs> take care of your crown yeah Thank you all so much for joining us. I feel like 